Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to learn something very exciting. Honeywell DCS Architecture I will quickly start to explain Honeywell DCS in terms of Purdue Enterprise Reference Architecture, and then we will go to the Control System Architecture. As you can see that in the Control and Automation field, different components are connected in various layers. Starting from the base layer, Level 1, at which we normally connect the devices, PLCs, DCS controllers, field bus devices, and all those things are connected at this level. And at the second level, you connect different control stations, servers, operator stations, engineering workstations, and all those things are connected at level 2 and then at level 3, which is the advanced application network. You connect field device managers. You can connect our process historian database and then the last layer could be for business network or for enterprise network, where you have different enterprise resource planners, ERPs, and different sort of softwares, which look after your complete businesses in the complete enterprise. So this is a general overview, and then we will move on to Honeywell DCS control system specific architecture. So let's just focus on this, this general picture. If you see here from bottom, we have field instruments coming from the bottom. Those field instruments are connected to the I.O. modules, and these are Series 8 I.O. module. They could be Series C.I.O. module. This is another Series 8 I.O. module. Those I.O. modules are connected to the DCS controllers, and that controllers is connected to this FTE network, and then the same goes for your field bus devices, FIM, and your Profibus gateway module. All of them are connected here at FTE Network, and if you see down at the right side of the have, Honeywell HC, 900 SIL, 2 PLC, and Master Logic ML, 200 PLC, that is also from Honeywell for process control. So these are also be connected to the FTE, and there's also one other option you can connect third party PLCs, DCSs, or some other things via Matricon OPC to our FTE network. And that FTE network is connected to this layer. And what we can have on this layer, we can have our console station here. We can have a flex station here. We can have redundant server. And also we can have a simulate simulation nodes in C300. So, which is why actually we are simulating your process your actual field process in a simulation environment. You just practice it. You verify your process, especially it is made for control engineers and process engineers. They simulate everything here, and then it is implemented via your servers and your engineering station. And on the advanced application network, you can connect your field device managers, which see your field devices and their calibrations. And then there is a process history and database which historize your important data and keep it for your future analysis. So this is our basic structure of Honeywell DCS. Now, we are going to discuss this part in, in our next slide. This is a bit more elaborated slide for C300 and its related IOs. So here you can see that we have series CIOs. We have PMIOs, the older versions. Same are here as well. And as normally, you can see that there are two numbers of IO links. One is IO Link 1 and IO Link 2, on which you can connect different IOs to a C300 controller. To talk about capacity, you can connect a maximum of 40 IOs on each link, and overall you can connect only 64 IOs to C300. Then we have redundant controllers. We get the network port connected to the control firewall. Primary and secondary both connect to the primary and secondary control firewall, and it is important that each and every C300 controller should be connected to our control firewall module. And after that, the firewall module is connected to uplink FTE level 1 switches. Then you can see that there are various stations here shown at the top. ESF stands for the Experian Flex Station. ESC is the Experian Console Station. And ESV is the Experian Server. And that shadow means that it is redundant servers, ACE is Application Control Environment, which is your engineering station. So all these are connected with the controller via level 2 FTE switches. And you can note that there is a looping between these two switches, 
so it provides you not only two paths, but four paths to your controller and different control stations for communication. That's where it comes, FTE. FTE actually stands for the Fault Tolerant Ethernet, so your network can tolerate more faults while still working normally. Now, let us see one more layer image of how the network is shown here, so you can clearly see that we have connected our basic main controller cluster here, another controller cluster here, another controller cluster here. Both have primary and secondary cables, and ends up in your primary and secondary switches. And you can see it is another switch which combines your different PLCs, and those ends up in your qualified Cisco FTE Level 2 switches. And you can see that all those things which we earlier explained as well. The console station, the flex station, the application control environment, experience servers, the extension station, control station, the extended server, and then the safety manager, and the terminal server, and the domain controller. All of them are connected to your level 2 switches. And then you can see that all of these can be connected to the upper layer via some router to different PhD servers, your other domain controller, your other subsystems, and third-party applications, and so on. You can connect that switch to the firewall. And this firewall, you can see it here. This is connected via this cable. And that firewall allows some terminal servers your management servers, your antivirus patch management servers, PHD shadow servers, and all those demilitarized zones. Stuff here, via this, this firewall, and finally you can feed this, this data after passing it through a firewall to your enterprise switch, An enterprise switch can connect to many ERPs or other application here. There are a lot of things to be discussed here, but it is a general overview if you have any question, so you can put your comments down below.